Yo guys, what is good? Today, we're going to be trying something a little bit different with a video here. This is actually requested by a few viewers that I do have. They did ask me to go over the MSI games and, and, and watch it, uh, not live, but watch the recording afterwards. I actually haven't seen this game yet, so I'm not, I don't really know what's going to happen in this game, but they wanted me to go over it and see, you know, what's going on in the game, like what I think about it, like any input I have to give you guys some insight if you guys aren't noticing certain things in these games, and to see how we can apply some of this stuff to our solo queue games, because... With the way that the, the meta works in the, uh, you know, competitive League of Legends realm, uh, we can maybe apply some of the stuff to our solo queue games and have that help us in some way too, right? So, it's really interesting to see here, right off the hop, C9 is 0-1, DFM is also 0-1, so it's going to be a match where we don't really know who has, a, who has the biggest talent here. One thing to note, though, is that C9 did end up actually banning Morgana, and if I remember correctly, I just watched, like, the, the post-game recap, C9 did get beat by a team that was running Morgana. Uh, I think it was Damwon. So obviously they do not want to deal with that again. They originally maybe thought that, hey, it's okay. But here it seems that they have a little bit of a different outlook here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just... Maybe? Nah. I, I'll just have no volume going on whatsoever and I'll just go over it. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, we do see the Nar, the Udyr being picked up on the side of DFM. We're going to see what they're going to opt to pick lit, pick third here. It's most likely going to be a support or ADC pick, I imagine. Most likely ADC pick uh, because they know who the enemy ADC is, but uh, yeah, we do see a Kaiza being picked here. Okay, so draft phase is pretty interesting. You know what, honestly, I'm just going to skip through draft because I'm, I'm just here for the gameplay, honestly. So we're going to go right up into here. So we see the team comps end up being Varus, Leona, Oriana, Nidalee, and then we have Jace, and then we have Udyr, Nar, Zoe, Kaiza, and Alistar. Both team comps on paper are actually very strong. I do think DFM did outdraft C9 a bit here. Um, I mean, I, I according to you know the way that uh, C9's comp is oriented, uh, like it's very very likely they're going to be going for a poke comp that also has initiation it's just it's kind of weird that they didn't choose an enchanter support in my opinion i don't think leona really fits into this team comp at all nor does oriana they should have pulled off some kind of longer range mage or mid lane like you'd, you'd like to see like a victor there or, or something else that has a decently long range that can assist in poking and then they just want an enchanter support that can help keep you know the carries alive in situations like this but I think Oriana is, is okay because she offers shields, so it's not a horrible pick, but Leona is the one pick that I really don't like from C9 here, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Leona is just one of those picks that like, sure it's it's nice, you, could, you have CC to follow up on the poke and then maybe there could be some kind of engage that happens with the chase, but eh, it just doesn't look the greatest. On the other hand, DFM has a really nice team comp here, we're gonna skip past these parts because we don't care about that shit. DFM has a really nice rounded team composition, they have good CC, they have good initiation, they have good uh, early game, late game. They have a very well rounded composition that doesn't really have a weak point throughout the, the course of the game. I do think they do get outscaled a little bit by C9 in all honesty, but I mean outside of that I think it's, it's, it's quite solid. Uh, quite a solid team comp. It's very well rounded. I don't really have any complaints. I don't know much about DFM in all honesty, but uh, they seem to be they seem to be performing. So in in draft at least they're performing well. So they know what they're doing is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's gonna be a really interesting game to see. I mean, obviously C9 is a top seed from North America. So as a North American myself, I am hoping that C9 does do well in this tournament. Um, of course, it's not always feasible, though. Um, so <laughs> historically, C9, or not, not C9, but North America, rather, hasn't really won too many tournaments. I mean, obviously, TL has won in MSI once, which was pretty pog champ. But outside of that, I mean, NA has won nothing international whatsoever. So, yeah, really interested to see what's going what's gonna to transpire in this game here. Alrighty. Now... Top lane matchup, I do say this favors Jace. Um, maybe that's why Fudge opted to pick the Jace here. He wanted a winning matchup. It's obviously a good matchup for him, but as we know from you know NALCS, uh, winning matchups top lane don't really mean anything. You can still lose those matchups regardless. Bot lane, I do think very, very slightly in favor of the Alistar Kaiza once they hit level 2. Uh, they will be pretty strong here. 
Um, and they're playing very aggressively, actually. I think they're definitely going to hit level 2 first here. Um, Leona uses a stun there. I don't like that at all. Mid lane is another really interesting matchup, actually. And we'll see how that transpires. I think Zoe obviously does have the edge in that matchup as well. But mid lane is essentially a 2v2. And I think Orianna and Nidalee can win the 2v2 if they play it correctly over Zoe and Udyr. Uh, but it will have to be played extremely well. It's very high skill cap champions on the side of C9. So they will really have to, you know, do their thing there. And Fudge actually is getting out-traded in that, in that there. Uh, he's a little bit cocky, walking up too far, and Nar instantly, as you would expect from a professional player, capitalizes and out-trades him with the boosted stats for Mega Nar. Now, we do see C9 Blabber. I do not think he should be trying for this right now. There is, this is not really a feasible uh play by him nar does have priority he'll get there first and uh yeah it's just a waste of time he should be clearing his jungle i mean actually now that i look at it blabber cleared his jungle really good he's obviously knows what he's doing in italy but this is bad this is bad this is bad you you just you give up this you give this up you give this up blabber what are you doing oh my god he ends what is what are you doing what did I just watch? Oh man. Steel is literally laughing his ass off right now. You just saw his... Oh man. Oh man. I cannot believe Blabber just did that, man. You're embarrassing our region, man. Blabber's trying to pretend like nothing just happened. Like there wasn't fucking... A metric fuck ton of people that just watched him into like that. Oh my... Man, feels bad, feels bad. Oh well, oh well. Anyways, moving on. Moving on. I mean, obviously, guys, I, I, I don't even think I... A uh, flash? There? That's not worth it? Oh, man. Okay. Anyways, continuing on. We see there's a lane gank going on in the bot lane here. Alistar can set this up with a flash pulverized knockback onto the Varus, so he has to be careful. But... Looking at the way that the minion wave is slow pushing, it's kind of risky to go for this. Oh, they, they're showing it again, man. Ah, oh, man. It hurts the soul to watch, bro. It hurts the soul to watch. Just looking at that little lion, just... Ah, oh, brother. Come on now. Okay. Or Lioness, I should say. Uh, but anyways, Blabber's continuing on with his clear. He's actually ahead in farm right now. I don't think that'll last very long, though, because Udyr is an amazingly fast clear. He's a little bit faster than Nidalee. Blabber is a phenomenal player, guys. Like, Not to take away from him at all, he is a fantastic League of Legends player. One of the best pro players in the jungle, for sure. Internationally, he's a really great player, but... Maybe he lets that get to his head and he goes for shit like that. You should never be flash smiting a scuttle, man like that like he uses his only escape in that situation to go into them and then just like it's Udyr early game man like that guy's gonna shit kick you there's no way you win that we see a, a cheese going on here though Leona and Varus go for it and that looks like a one shot on the Alistar very good setup there actually by Vulcan I respect the Leona play there they pretended like they cheater recalled and then the enemy team was like all right we have to push this fast surprise bitch Really good, because Alistar also had to use Pulverize there to start pushing the wave, so good stuff. And we see because uh, Nidalee has been shown bot lane, they are going to go for this dive. It's going to be pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, wait a second. Oh, Nar actually went in too early there. And Fudge manages to fend off there. Um, yeah, yeah, that dive was actually, uh, that was a really dumb dive, actually, now that I think about it. They could have played that so much better. So what so what Nara needed to do there was he needed to wait until Udyr was like literally right in front of Fudge's fucking face. And then he like like they're literally both on top of him, and then they use both of their damage and abilities at the same time to take him out. That's what they need to do there, but unfortunately Nara engages that preemptively before even Udyr is able to get in there and um, stands at the edge of tower range. Uh, it was just a really bad dive. Honestly, it's going to be very embarrassing if C9 loses this game. I don't think this DFM team is all that great. They, they seem to be playing very poorly. Maybe the nerves is just getting the best of C9 here in this game. I don't know, but it's just... 
really good uh, engage there by uh, Alistar with the Hex Flash, though. Unfortunately, though, Kai'Sa has a really rough time in, uh, into Varus because all, uh, all Varus needs to do is use his Reign of Arrows to slow down Kai'Sa's initiation because she's such a slow moving ADC and she has a lot of trouble getting into range to actually trade in these kind of matchups so you can see it in the full effect right there Alistair finds a really nice engage but it doesn't even matter in the end because Varus is a very strong pick into Kai'Sa all he needs to do is hail of arrows along Kai'Sa's path and it takes her way too long to get in there and actually have a meaningful impact on that engage so looking at the mid lane now we do see uh, CS wise it is relatively even we see 70 to 72, very close in farm, um, nothing too crazy going on there. Perk's uh, a solid player, no doubt, and it looks like C9 is going to opt to take this dragon here, of course. Uh, we know that Udyr is topside, and Udyr is now going to go straight for Rift Herald, as we can see on the mini-map. So just good good macro by both players. I mean, I think as a uh, blue team, you kind of have to give up the first dragon here. Uh, it's just very evident that the bot side of the map is stronger. Um, they're, you know, they have a kill that they got earlier. Uh, they just had, you know, better items at the time that they started the dragon, and um, it's just risky to try and fight there for uh, for blue team. So they're just gonna respect the fact that hey, uh, they're a little bit stronger at this point in time. We should probably just respect that. And and now that um, Udyr has taken this rift, it's really interesting to see him actually invade here. He is going over a ward, so. Blabber does know that he's there. I mean, he also knows that there's a control ward there now. So Blabber's just going to opt to hug the top side here as Nar and Udyr go for his red buff. And he's just going to let it happen. I guess Fudge is pushed under tower, so he can't really help. It's really weird to see Fudge just get completely dominated in the top lane. Every single time I've looked top or we've panned to top, he's always been pushed under the tower. I feel like he should be playing a lot more aggressive in this matchup. You know, trying to actually, you know, gather, gather some kind of lead. But it just looks like he's getting absolutely shit on. And this is why I hate it when Fudge gets these winning matchups top lane, you know? Like, he never actually plays well. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but isn't Jace supposed to be good into Nar? Just looking at the matchup and, and how the champions work, it just makes sense. Jace outranges Nar, Jace outdamages Nar in the earlier stages of the game. It just it just makes sense, you know. Jace also it has Nimbus cloak, so he's able to run around quickly. And like I feel, and then yeah, he's gonna die here. This 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 is an actually good dive this time around. There's there's no way he lives, so he does die here, and Nar lives with Flash. Very well played. See that time, um. The way that he turned into Mega and he engaged on that dive was a lot better. It was it was a lot better. He waited until Udra was a lot closer and then he stunned him and they both were able to provide DPS and Nar was able to escape with Flash at the end. Very well played. <coughs> so lots of respect on that one. Um, <clears throat> really awesome to see how this game's unfolding. I do think that DFM is posturing up for the win here and holy fuck Blabber just got destroyed there. That was some crazy damage, my man. Um, anyways, uh, after now, after this now, it uh, looks like he's just going to go ahead and take Boss Scuttle, and Dragon is spawning relatively soon now, 2 minutes and 25 seconds, so we will be seeing a fight around there soon. I do think that uh, DFM is going to go for the fight on Dragon here, uh, just because DFM is, is in a better spot now that the top laner has such a big lead, if they have a... Uh, because of the, all that tower plate, gold, and all that. And same thing with Udyr. They actually got a pretty big uh, gold lead in the top side of the map. So I do think that it is likely that they win a fight now. That Udyr has his mythic item. And Perk's actually really, I think, overstepping here. He actually gets it, too. Wow, that is insane. I feel like Zoe should have walked up more aggressively. But they just... She just felt very weary because bot lane was missing, I guess, and uh, they didn't have any vision, so... Perks playing around vision very, very well. Perks is obviously a really strong and fantastic player. Um, he, he knows how to really apply pressure to the enemy team and get them sweating. And... Very unfortunate, though, just as I'm saying that, Perks is also getting caught out here. He actually manages to live. That is phenomenal, man. Insanity.
Perks does live that. We see Dragon is coming up in a minute now, so Perks has to insta reset here. And as Dinar is on the other side of the map making plays, Fudge is pushing this in, hoping to get some tower plating damage. And we see Perks is going to use his TP to get back in the lane here. Doesn't want to miss out on anything. And was there a ward there? Oh, there was. Okay. There was a ward there. Okay. I was going to say that guy has some insane game knowledge if you just threw that out there. Uh, but yeah, I actually really like DFM Aria. He's playing really well. I really respect his uh, his aggression here in the game. He has a lot of confidence in himself. He's playing pretty solidly. Uh, is DFM... Are they... Is that LPL? Or is that like the Japanese team? Can't recall. Uh, but either way, they're playing, they're playing pretty well. They are some Asian uh, team. I, I'm not entirely sure from where exactly, but... They are playing very well, actually. I'm very surprised at just how uh, controlled they're playing. They are giving C9 a decent amount of agency here and ability to actually, you know, gain pressure though on the map at the same time. So they're definitely not like the top top uh, team here at MSI, but they are they are showcasing their ability here and they are playing fairly well. Now we do see that this is like I predicted here that they are going to be going for a fight here at the Infernal Dragon. Um, they have to be careful though. Zoe can land a bubble here quite easily. And that could uh, that could equate to a kill. We see a nice poke there from. Wow, Blabber steals that. We see that Alistar engage here. That's definitely going to be someone dying here. Leona dead, um, and no one else should die here at all. Actually, this is a uh, damn. So uh, th uh, that's actually worth it. I would say. I would say that's worth it. They get dragon and they trade one life for it in exchange. I mean, the gold lead is going to grow here, obviously, because of the kill. But I mean. That, that's obviously, that's okay, that's okay. They do end up getting the dragon here in the end, and Fudge is able to actually get back in the game, more or less, by just power farming, as Nara was no longer in the top lane. Um, so, we do see that Fudge has actually accumulated, you know, uh, a lot of gold here. He's not quite ahead of the Nara by any means, but he has gotten a CS lead. So, that is, uh, that is very nice to see. He is uh, doing something. My, my concern here is, though, is that... Fudge isn't going to have an impact on this game whatsoever. Like, he's just going to fall off and he's no longer going to be of use uh, to his team by the time he hits whatever power spike he's looking for. I mean, essentially, as of right now, he's, like, basically gotten the counter pick and he hasn't done anything with it. He's actually lost lane, lost tower. So, really sad to see. Blabber also performing very poorly here. I mean, this game is basically on Sven and Vulcan right now and, of course, Perks to showcase their ability to carry here. I have a feeling this is going to be a long game, just based by like what's happening. I mean, uh, C9 did get those two dragons, which is inevitably going to stall this game out quite a bit. If, if DFM had those two dragons, this game would just be over. But because C9 has managed to snag those two dragons, this game's going to be drawn out. I think it's, I think it's going to be a long brawl, um, just based off of that alone. And... Uh, I mean, that was a really good steal by Blabber. I'm really surprised that he got that Infernal. I don't think they should be fighting for this right now. Red Team should just let that, that Herald go. I don't think they really can contest this, unfortunately. So they just kind of have to let it be. Leona. Was that a bug? That, it looks like it didn't even hit her there. What the fuck? That was weird, man. Oh, well. Anyways. We're just seeing... Uh, we're just seeing, you know... What happens generally when there's no objectives up? Most people are just farming, playing back. You see, Fudge does spot out the Udir slash Nar looking for him on his recall. So he's just going to back up a little bit more and go back to base as mid lane's being pushed in. Perks will be able to pick this up too. Everything's looking pretty good so far. I mean, yeah, I think we're, we're really posturing up for a really late game kind of game here. I do think that overall. Both teams have a relatively even late game. You know, like, I wouldn't say one team comp necessarily hard outscales the other. I do think, actually, C9 has a slight advantage in the late game. Because their team comp is going to be really frustrating to try and siege against. Or try and push in against. Because they have so much poking tools, right? So, moving up on a Varus. Moving up on a Nidalee. Moving up on a Jace. Those are three really long-range poking champions that... Nobody on DFM can actually really target. 
They need to find a hard engage. They need to find a sleepy bubble. They need to find a big Gnar ultimate. They need to find an Alistar flash pulverize or something if they want any hopes of sieging and breaking down C9's towers here. Um, so we might see that come in here. We might not. We'll see how this game progresses. Uh, we do see, of course, Blabber is a relatively even in farm still on the Udyr, actually, which is quite sh surprising, all things considered, I think, at this point in time. Um, I do think that, uh, considering that Blabber has died twice and he has had to concede parts of his jungle, it is quite surprising that at 17 minutes he's relatively even with the Udyr. I mean, I think Udyr will, will garner a little bit more of a lead over time because of his jungle timers being better you know he has like camp spawning while blabber doesn't because blabber had a couple taken away from him and we see c9 was attempting to set something up in the top lane here but it was spotted out by nar's excellent game sense so we're seeing aria and perks in the mid lane here they're going to push down this tower because they, this is actually really good uh gameplay by dfm here i really like this they see that c9 sent a lot of resources top lane so they drop herald and crack the mid lane tower and that mid lane tower is actually vital um it, it opens up the map a shit ton so now that that mid tower has been cracked and it is open they now are more free to invade the jungle as you can see they already are doing um because they have more escape routes and more pathing in which they could run to if they need to and the enemy team is a lot less secure they can't just run to their tower now they have to run even further so you know, opening up the map that way is, is, is vital to DFM's success in this game. They can now plant vision in C9's jungle, as they already have done, and just go for dragons, right? Uh, pick them on their way to it. It doesn't look like C9 is super confident in walking up here, and they know, they know for a fact DFM is on this dragon, but they just don't feel like they have a way of getting in there. So they're just backing up. They're saying, you know what, we'll just let you guys have it for free. We're no longer going to fight it. So this is why vision is really important, guys. This is why getting control of the map is really important because you can go for objectives and stuff like this and seeing things from a bird's eye view like this and looking down on it it just gives you better perspective sometimes of what's happening and i, I really like this because i'm also able to art articulate my thoughts differently seeing the whole picture instead of just focusing in on jungle gameplay um so it's really fun for me to do this too guys uh to kind of give you guys that extra level of knowledge and um yeah we do see here that uh Obviously, uh, at this point, uh, DFM is just going to want to reset, you know, get their health bars back up and get ready to just, you know, come back in and look for some form of engage. Uh, clearing out the jungle camps, continuing to, you know, just push their lead. Now, we are definitely going to see Blabber fall behind now in the jungle because of the way that this game's progressing. And... This Zoe is getting just a little bit... Whoa, that was forgiving. That was really forgiving. This, you could definitely see the Zoe is starting to get just a little bit too cocky, I think. I feel like the Zoe may get caught out at some point in this game because of the way that he's playing. And it might cost DFM, not the game, but it's going to stall out the game. I do think DFM has this game. They have really good control. They're posturing really well. They're playing super calculated. They're not taking any crazy risks. I do think they're playing this game very, very strongly, very well. But they have to continue doing that. They can't lose sight. And it does look like Zaven does get an engage here. Fudge flashes in. I mean, that was that was okay, actually. I think Fudge flashing in there, it, 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 it's hard to say. You know, like, it, it is possible that Nar does get close enough to the wall and flashes out and lives because of it. So... You know, I'm not going to critique him on that. I think it is uh, completely acceptable. You just don't want to take a risk there, right? So, good stuff by C9 putting up a pick there. Um, and guys, uh, you know, whenever I'm critical of, of gameplay, it's not because like I think I'm better or something like that. I, I provide that level of insight and that, that level of critical you know, analysis so that we can pick apart their mistakes and learn from them. That's my only goal is to learn from the mistakes, guys, right? So it's always important to be critical, especially if pro play, because these guys are supposed to be the benchmark for what is the pinnacle of League of Legends, the, the best of the best, right? So we have to be critical of their gameplay in order to analyze it, right? And, and to improve upon it, right? That's, that's where... Uh, that's why I, I am critical of this kind of gameplay. 
we, we're looking to improve as a community the cool kids that's what we're looking to do right so i'm always going to be critical i'm always going to say like hey you shouldn't have done this you should have done this because you learn more from your mistakes than you do from the things that you do well right generally when you do something really well it means that you've already learned from your mistakes and that's why you're doing well at something so i'm always critical of mistakes guys that's the best way to learn and we do see perks Yeah, this is, this is when the way that Perks plays doesn't pan out, you know? Um, frankly, he has no vision of anyone on the map whatsoever. Literally five members missing, and he's walking into the fog of war. That's just not what you should be doing. So we do see here that, obviously, because DFM has numbers advantage, they're going to try and force a fight here. But Alistar goes a little bit too far forward, and... That was actually very well played by Fudge. I'm very surprised. And we see Nar as well, just overextending. And C9 makes something of nothing. They capitalize on DFN's mistakes. And they end up getting a couple... They end up getting a kill almost two, actually. Forcing DFM to back. DFM could have actually gone to Baron there. They could have went to Baron there. If they didn't overchase there. So we do see Perks starting off this engage by playing poorly. So it doesn't go off. And you see here, DFM should have just went to Baron. I mean, they very obviously were wanting to play around it, but Nar decides to TP behind to try and get some form of engage. He ults back, goes in, and hits the blast cone, which is very well played, honestly. But you can see very clearly here, you know, Alistar went way too far forward. Zoe does not hit the Q there, and Nar almost dies as well because of it. Vulcan should have been positioned a little bit more aggressively there. I think he was playing too far back, but it is what it is. C9 makes something of nothing. DFM over chases for no reason, and we see it translate into something, which is good. C9 is still fighting. It's a brawl here. Oh my god, and, and we see once again Arya in this position absolutely loves it. He's just poking out C9 here, and C9 says we're not going to give you two mountain soul, mountain dragons rather. We need this soul. We're going to fight for this now, guys. I mean, the thing with DFM is if they get Mountain Soul here, C9's fucked. Their poke comp is just completely obliterated. So they, they realize this, and they also don't want the enemy team to get too many resistances. Oh my god, this engage is actually insane. We do see there is a 1 for 1, 2 for 1 so far in the fight. We do still have all of C9's carries alive, but there's no peel for these carries anymore because they did get split. So it's, you know... A dead top laner for a dead mid lane and support. I uh, I don't think that this is very fightable for them. I mean, luckily Zoe is relatively low. Oh no, that's bad. That's really bad. This is going to be a dead Sven now. Everyone's dead here. Oh, that was a good spear by Blabber. Uh, Fudge and Blabber are playing this relatively well. But the more spears that Blabber misses, the more fucked they become. Wow. Fudge. Wow. Fudge actually pops off with so much damage there. And Blabber's just not landing spears, man. He's throwing spears like to fucking Neptune. I don't know where he's aiming them, but it's definitely not at the enemy team. And uh, we do see here that they are wanting to restart this dragon now, which is completely understandable. Zoe is pretty much out of mana. Blabber gets f destroyed there. And we do see, obviously, Arya is very low on mana. Actually out of mana now. Can't even cast any more abilities. And Nar is coming in here because he says, We can't give this away. But DFM, once again, they overchase, they overextend, and they pay for it. Crazy to see here, guys. This is just an insane game, actually. I fucking love this game. It's super exciting so far. As I thought, it's an all-out fucking brawl in the end here. And C9 picks up another dragon, putting them on soul point. Meaning, if they get next dragon, they are very well positioned to actually win this game here. So, I'm excited to see what happens here. I am excited to see what happens here in this game. So we do see Perks gets absolutely just split up from the team there. And Kaiza comes in. Very well played by Kaiza here. I'm actually huge respect to the guy here. Um, unfortunately, though, we do see... I'm actually so surprised this 2v4 happened. So I don't know why Blabber was that far up there. He was just way over positioned. And unfortunately, Sven actually gets baited by Blabber there. And right here, you see, it's really good Zanyas by Blabber. He actually, he played that mechanically really well. And Fudge, man. 
Fudge just absolutely smurfed on the enemy team. Now we do see that DFM was positioning around Baron. They no longer are now. And this is the thing against... This is the thing about C9 too. Trying to take any objectives against them. Trying to take Baron or Dragon against them is actually incredibly difficult as well. It is really, really rough. Ooh, that was really close. Arya really just showcasing how abusable Zoe's Q is. It's way too forgiving, I think, guys. I guess those max range Qs is going to do as much as like a fucking Nidalee Spear. So, I mean, looking at this game so far, I mean, it, it's still looking relatively even. C9, just one kill behind. Obviously, they're, they have uh, more towers. Uh, be, uh, like, they have, uh, you know, D DFM has one more tower than C9, so... Now uh, they are up ahead on towers, but the gold's getting close actually too. It's pretty close. It's only within 2k now. Uh, that last fight obviously helping a decent amount from C9. They're getting some shutdowns and really just uh, pulling their weight here, going for it. Fudge really showcasing how he's actually one of the top top laners in in NA now. He at the beginning of this LCS split, he was such a weak link of the team and now he's just showcasing how he's one of the best and uh, you really love to see it I mean he's shitting on Alfari even who was considered to be like one of the best players and um, you love to see it man you really do you absolutely love to see it Blabber he's doing better now he was kind of falling behind earlier on in the game but he's showing you know hey this is why I'm considered to be one of the best junglers in North America. He is coming back into the game. And c is certainly, certainly making DFM work for this game here. And uh, we do see... Oh, man, why are you doing this, Sven? Man. I don't know why Sven would be, like, so close there to the tower, like... Man, you have to expect stuff like that when you're against an Udyr, Alistar, and Nar. Like, you have to expect them. I mean, fucking Udyr has chem tank, man. Of course they're going to go for these plays. And they know where the rest of your team is, Sven. Like, you just... If you don't have vision of Udyr and, like, two or three other members of the team are missing, like, yeah, you're at risk of getting dove. And uh, we do see their Udyr making it work. And they get Baron because of it. And this is going to make the game just incredibly difficult. Perks, for some reason, is just 1v1 in the Alistar. Did Perks ult there? He did. Perks actually did ult there to try and kill the Alistar. He trades ult for ult with Ali. I mean, it's whatever. Perks' ult CD is really low. It's going to be back in like 40 seconds. So, can't really complain about it too much. It's just the way it goes. And uh, C9 now pos positioning up. They really want to break this tower down. But unfortunately, they're not going to get it here. And uh, in the end, I think... just the way it goes man it's just the way it goes and we may see something else happen here at dragon who knows but uh, I do think that DFM will win this fight they have a very strong engage against this poke composition and, uh, you know, Dragon spawning 9 seconds now, so of course they're going to fight for it. C9 needs to land more poke before the fight starts. Zven instantly ults back. Kaiser goes over the wall, hitting everyone over the wall. Blabber flashes for him for some reason. They do end up killing the Alistar, which is really nice to see. And there goes the Orianna. Perks does get his ult off before he does die, though. And Nar just smurfs on the team there. And it's one of those situations, again, where Fudge is left to try and carry this. But we can clearly see that uh, DFM is able to secure the team fight here. They can't end here, I don't think. I don't think they can end here. There's 25 seconds. Actually, maybe they can. They can end here. It's going to be close. They are very low, and we have perks coming up in 10 seconds. Oh, there's Vulcan. <sighs> yeah, they got it. GG. GG. They go for the end there. It was a little bit risky if they didn't get it that quick. It was over, but 
they ended up winning that game, guys, and man, that game was an all-out fucking bro. Let me know your thoughts about this game in the comment section, guys. This was something else. I mean, C9 really did hang on for a long time, but you can see they didn't get their poke off in team fights, and because of that, they just get hard engaged on and lose the fight. I kind of saw this game going this way after I saw the first couple dragon plays, but I mean, C9 still fought for it in the end. But yeah, guys, if you like this video, if you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments, guys. And I'm trying something new, like I was saying, so let me know if you do enjoy this type of content, if you like this kind of gameplay analysis. If not, let me know too, guys. I'm doing this content for you guys at the end of the day, so I just want to see how it translates over. But if you did like it, drop a like, drop a subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Have a good day, guys.